Okay, last case. We have a 74-year-old male who reports having a benign lesion uh, resected from his temple about five years ago. He was treated at an outside hospital. They took the lesion out, and after surgery, he started having lancing pain on the right side of his face. He, a year later, he developed facial numbness on the right, and then four years later, he got diplopia, drooling from the right side of the mouth, and chewing difficulty. This is the axial T1 post-contrast. Here's the coronal. What's the most likely diagnosis? Is it lymphoma, perineural spread of tumor, meningioma, schwannoma, or none of the above? So let's start the clock. You have 10 seconds. Is it one, lymphoma, two, perineural spread of tumor, three, meningioma, four, schwannoma, or none of the above? Very good. Okay, guys, so you really hit it on the head just by the history alone. You should have known it was perineural spread of tumor. And you have to remember, too, that it's usually the elderly population that has skin cancers, and they tend not to remember that, oh, yeah, I think I had a lesion removed. And if they even remember having one removed, they always say it was no big deal. So, so just by knowing the history, you know that it's, it's a um, perineural spread of tumor. It's also, it's not, a, it's not going to be a meningioma because this tumor obviously trace, traces the entire length of V2 and goes into the pond, so it's the course of the fifth cranial nerve. Oh, there we go. So I just want to talk a little bit about the um, fifth cranial nerve, the trigeminal nerve and its branches. And although I know neurofibromas and schwannomas and other tumors can form here, we're going to talk mainly about perineural spread right now. So you can see if you had a skin lesion anywhere on the face that is innervated by these nerves, the tumor can jump on these nerves, um, as we just saw, and it can just it can track retrograde along the cranial nerve. Here's V2 into the cavernous sinus, or they can jump from one to the other and go anterograde, retrograde, anything it wants. So if you have a skin lesion, um, it can just creep along back and go into the cavernous sinus, but also remember that there are other tumors that can do this, like if you have a palate tumor, you can see how it can jump on V2, or you know, hard or soft palate tumor, or a maxillary sinus tumor that breaks into the pterygopalatine fossa, particularly the adenoid cystic carcinomas from the hard palate or maxillary sinus love to creep along the nerve. And then also V3, you have a skin lesion on the chin, it can jump on the mental nerve, go along the inferior alveolar nerve and, and track its way. These tumors, perineural spread can skip along, it can go anterograde, it can go retrograde. So here's a nice example of a patient that has melanoma. You can see it's in front of the maxillary sinus and the premaxillary soft tissues right where the infraorbital nerve exits, right at the infraorbital nerve foramen. So you would expect that this tumor is going to track back, um, go into the pterygopalatine fossa and go into V2. So we have this next uh, image where you can see the tumor nicely in the pterygopalatine fossa tracking along the infraorbital nerve, made its way into the pterygopalatine fossa, and finally, this enhancing, you can see it's in the cavernous sinus. This is the same patient just to show you what perineural spread looks like. You have to have the nerve to be abnormally enlarged and enhancing. It can't just be enhancing. It has to be abnormally enlarged. And here in the cavernous sinus, this is where V2 lives. It's more inferior than most people realize, but this is perineural spread along V2. Now, this is another patient, but she doesn't have a history of a squamous cell carcinoma or melanoma, no skin cancers. And you can see tumor in the pterygopalatine fossa, sphenopalatine foramen. It's going along V2 into the cavernous sinus and into Meckel's cave. And if you look on the bone windows, the, the um, foramen rotundo is abnormally enlarged. So this looks all the world like our perineural spread, except for they have no cancer history. And this woman actually had lymphoma. This is the same patient. Look at the, um, look at the um, foramen rotundum abnormally enlarged where the perineural spread is as uh, compared to the normal side, even the vidian canal is abnormally enlarged from tumor tracking on it. Here's a normal vidian canal. You go more posteriorly, you can see foramen ovale abnormally widened, tumors along V3, as opposed to the normal side. So here's another patient with lymphoma, and this is, you can see where you have a differential and you don't always quite know if it's lymphoma, perineural spread, or then we're gonna talk about schwannoma. This patient actually has melanoma. This is tumor along V3 heading towards the mandible. And if you look in the mandible, pre-contrast T1, you can see abnormal enlargement of the um, inferior alveolar nerve as opposed to the normal left side. Notice I'm showing this to you on pre-contrast T1 so that you can see the nerve against the normal fatty marrow of an adult in the mandible. On, and again, notice it's fairly uniform, this en enlargement of the canal. So, like I said, without a good clinical history, you know, if you, you need to talk to your clinicians if, if the patient has skin cancer, if they have lymphoma, or if they have nothing. It, it helps you kind of get an idea, get a better idea of what the patient has. This patient has tumor along V3. This is melanoma. 
this patient has no history of skin cancer, no history of anything, actually, no symptoms, and she actually has a schwannoma. Well, you really can't tell the difference between these lesions without further history. And sometimes you get lucky, and on this case, we did get lucky. This person has a panorex. This is the woman with the schwannoma. And whenever you usually see lymphoma or perineural spread along the mandibular canal, this is the mandibular canal normally on the right. Look on the left side how it's undulating. Normally you see it smoothly enlarged, uniformly. This one's undulating, and although this is a very rare case, just by seeing this film, you know it's a schwannoma and not lymphoma or perineural spread of disease. So that's it.